The ability to walk or move through places is an important characteristic which separates us from plants. We call it locomotion and define as the movement which helps us to get from point A to point B. Remember that this is a voluntary movement. Animals use this evolutionary upgrade to find food, shelter, mate and to escape from predation. Let's say I want to eat something. Okay, and I see a Pani Puri stall down the road. I can just walk down there and eat them, right? So nothing is going to prevent me from doing it. My legs are going to take me there and I reach the Pani Puri stall and I'm eating it. This is a very simple way to say locomotion helps us to find food. But locomotion can look very different in different organisms. Let's take a look at the next example. So this is an amoeba. And here it is using its locomotory structures to move as well as to trap this particular food particle to engulf it. In lower classes, you might have heard the term endocytosis or uh, to be more specific, phagocytosis, where organisms like amoeba engulfs food. The concept of locomotion, therefore, differs across the animal kingdom depending upon the situation and what sort of animal we are talking about. Protozoans are microscopic eukaryotic cells. Um, which could be free living or parasitic. So if they are free living, they have to move around in water. If they are parasitic, they have to move through the host body. Whatever be their lifestyle, they are very versatile in their movement. The reason I say this is because they have different modes of locomotion. First is using a pseudopodia. Second is using a cilia. Third is using a flagella. And fourth is using a myony. In the series of videos, we are going to be looking at each of these specific locomotion types that we see in protozoan. In this video, we are going to see how a protozoan moves using pseudopodia. The movement using a pseudopodia is called as a pseudopodal movement. It's specifically seen in rhizopods, which are a group of uh, protozoans that show amoeboid movement using pseudopodia. Pseudopodia is the finger-like projection that comes out of the amoeba's body. The pseudopodal movement is considered to be the most primitive and the slowest mode of locomotion and the uh, pseudopodia develops in the direction of the movement. It's almost similar to how humans walk if you actually think about it. Because let's say we want to move in a certain direction, uh, we put our foot out in that direction, right? Um, in the same way, amoeba also puts out uh, its pseudopodia. Hence, uh, this term pseudo meaning false, poda meaning legs, pseudopodia or the false legs of amoeba. There are different types of pseudopodia. Uh, the most common form that we usually discuss is the lobopodia, uh, which is seen in amoeba. So these are the blunt finger-like uh, projections that come out of the amoeba. So you can see them in amoeba and in entamoeba. Second, it's called as a philopodia. You can see that these are very fiber-like, filamentous pseudopodia, and they are very tapering. It is seen in organisms like Euglypha. Third is a reticulopodia. Here, these are branched and interconnected uh, pseudopodia, and they are net-like. These are observed in Elphidium. Axopodia or hexapodia are straight needle-like pseudopodia. So in this organism, they look like sun's rays, right? Um, and such kind of pseudopodia is seen in actinophores. To learn about pseudopodia and how amoeba moves, we have to learn what happens inside the amoeba's body, what enables it to give out the pseudopodia. And to do that, we are going to deviate a little bit from biology and recall something that we learned in chemistry. This is a colloidal suspension, meaning you are going to have particles that are suspended in the liquid. This is called a sol and it has more of a fluid consistency. There is another state in which uh, we have the solid particles all coming together to form a semi-solid substance which has properties of both solid as well as the liquid. And this is called as a gel and you can either call it as solid or it could sometimes be more viscous also. Both these states are interchangeable. The reason we are learning about this is because amoeba cytoplasm can also exist in these two states. So let's consider an amoeba. Uh, it has its nucleus as well as contractile vacuole. You can see that I've shown the organism in a graded sort of color. So the outer portion is different from the inner portion. The outer portion or the outer endoplasmic part is in a gel form and the inner part is in the form of salt. So the outer part is more viscous when compared to the inner part. 
And in order to represent these two zones, we use the term plasma gel to talk about the outer endoplasmic part and plasma sol to talk about the inner endoplasmic part. Plasma gel and plasma sol are interchangeable. Although there are many theories which try to explain amoeboid movement, this gel sol theory uh, seems to be the most accepted. So what this theory says is that the amoeboid movement happens by a cyclical conversion of the amoeba cytoplasm between the plasma gel and the plasma sol states. All the different theories that exist to talk about uh, amoeboid movement differ in their opinion on where the protrusion in the amoeba originates from. Where does the protrusion originate from? Does it originate from the front, the top, the back or the side? To explain this, we have the Allen's theory of front contraction, which is also known as the fountain zone contraction theory. This theory, which was put forward in 1962, is considered as the most appropriate one because unlike others, he observed the amoeba from the side moving to a certain direction and not from the top. He said that there are endoplasmic molecules that are near the front end of the amoeba that start moving before the ones at the posterior end start to move. So let's say an amoeba wants to move towards this direction. According to him, the endoplasm contains certain proteins and these endoplasmic proteins start moving to the anterior in this particular fashion. These endoplasmic molecules initially exist as a plasma sol because they are towards the inner part of the amoeba. And then as they move towards the front, they encounter a special zone called as the zone of gelation where the plasma sol gets converted into plasma gel. This plasma gel then starts moving posterior and it creates a fountain-like appearance over here. The plasma gel continues to move towards the posterior where it encounters a zone of solution. Here, the gel is converted back to the sol where it again moves towards the front. The plasma gel converts into plasma sol to continue the supply for creating a new pseudopodia. He said that this kind of movement develops a tension in the anterior region, which is then transmitted to the posterior end of the endoplasm, and the fountain-like movement of the gel forces the amoeba to move forward. Now, let's look at this concept in working. So, even before the amoeba starts moving, it has to attach to the substratum or the surface for the locomotion to occur. So, we have an amoeba and it protrudes its um, pseudopodia. You can notice that the inner sol has now spread to the tips. So here it should have been the gel state, but it's in the sol state. This fluid movement helps in pushing the cytoplasmic membrane towards the direction it has to move. Now, once it has moved towards the appropriate distance, it converts the sol back to the gel form. In the same way, the plasma gel at the posterior is now converted to plasma sol so that this particular pseudopodia can be maintained. And finally, the plasma gel tube contracts, drawing the body forward. And then the new pseudopodium is given out in the same direction. This sort of a streaming movement of plasma sol is repeated again and again until the organism progresses forward. So let's summarize. So we have the plasma gel state of the cytoplasm. In order to move, this gel has to convert into plasma sol by a process of solvation. The streaming or flow of plasma sol pushing onto the cytoplasmic membrane is what extends out the pseudopodium. Now to fix the pseudopodium, the plasma sol has to convert back to the gel state by a process called as gelation. From plasma sol, if you remove water, it turns into a gel and we can see a proper pseudopodial extension. Fixation of the pseudopodia then creates forward displacement of the amoeba's body. The latest research, however, has shown that there is involvement of special proteins called as actin and myosin. These are contractile proteins, meaning they have the ability to contract and relax. Let's see how that works by looking at the specific portion of the pseudopodia. So this extended area is called as the leading edge of the cell. And inside we have our actin polymer, which is made from actin monomers. The process of addition of the monomeric molecules to the polymer is called as polymerization. This generates a pushing force against the cell membrane, which causes it to protrude. It basically creates a push force. And this is the initial step in forming a pseudopodium. But we have one more player, which is myosin. Myosin is attached to the actin and it pulls it in the backward direction. So what happens is that the monomers are not able to readily combine with the polymer and this is observed as a backward flow of actin 
and called as the retrograde flow. Terminology here is not important. You just have to know that the actin starts moving towards the back. So we can say that the myosin is creating a pull force. So at some point when the push force is equal to the pull force, the cell is not able to move anywhere. It becomes a stationary cell. Earlier, when we were discussing amoeboid movement, I told you that for this locomotion to happen, amoeba has to fix itself onto a surface or substratum, right? It turns out there are special proteins for that and they connect the actin proteins to the surface. These proteins can attach and detach from the substrate based upon how the cell is moving. So, when they attach to the substratum, they anchor the actin and they slow down the backward pull. Remember the myosin was pulling it back? Well, that is now slowed down. And it creates a resistance towards the backward pull. So now we have three forces acting here. One is the forward push by your actin. A second is the backward pull by myosin. And third is the resistance that is created by the uh, anchoring proteins. When these anchoring proteins are attached to the substratum, uh, this creates a pulling force and that force is transmitted to the actin. And it creates what is called as a traction force. Um, you can imagine it like the friction that is required for us when we walk on a surface. So when we put our foot out um, and we try to put our next foot forward, the foot that is already on the floor has to create a certain force. So that is actually frictional force for humans. But for amoeba, we call it as a traction force. And this force helps in pulling the entire body of the amoeba forward. In this case, myosin is particularly important for generating a huge traction force because it not only has to move forward, but it also has to retract the back portion of the cell. Amoeboid movement is also seen in WBCs uh, like macrophages and neutrophil. Watch this macrophage which is chasing a bacteria. This is how the immune cells function to keep us safe from pathogens. 